There's a technique that every great metal rhythm guitar player uses to play silky smooth transitions on slippery riffs, but I've never seen anybody talk about it, and you've never seen it, because it takes place on this side of the neck. That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Uncle Ben, and this is Why You Suck at Guitar. So just the other day, over on my Patreon page, I got a message from a lovely and loyal Patreon supporter asking how he could play the intro riff to Blood and Thunder by Mastodon more better. Now, this is not that crazy of a riff, but what it does feature is some really quick and slippery slides all over the neck. He described having some problems playing that riff due to the way that his hand was kind of sliding up and down the neck. He said it always sounded really jerky and didn't sound smooth. And I knew right away what the problem was because I've seen this with so many other players attempting to play similar riffs. Like let's say that riff in like For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica with all the quick position shifts. This one right here. <laughs> Riffs like those two feature really quick position shifts. And if you're using the wrong technique with the thumb on the back side of the neck, it's gonna be impossible to play them super smoothly. But on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the technique that you need in order to really smooth this stuff out. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. Sign up today even for just a buck a month. You're gonna get access to a ton of backing tracks, bonus lessons, downloadable tabs, and so much more. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing this lovely new Jackson soloist that I just got, which is just a shred machine. Love this guitar. I'm in standard tuning. Obviously, uh, Blood and Thunder is down a whole step, but if you're playing the home game, this will make it a little easier to keep up with. Playing that into the Axe FX3. Okay, so I've got my camera angle here flipped and reversed, Missy Elliott style. That way you can see it more better. How's this angle? Is it good for you? It's good for me. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. That riff from Blood and Thunder features a lot of rapid slides from the fifth position power chord to the seventh position power chord. And whenever I see people playing this riff and having difficulty with those slides, here's what it looks like 100% of the time. <laughs> really hard to control that when the entire hand is shifting up and down. You can see the thumb kind of sticking to the back of the neck, applying pressure. It makes it really hard to do those quick position shifts. What you need to be doing instead is this technique that I call the pivot. Just like Ross on Friends, right? Pivot! Pivot! I'm not showing my age at all by making this joke. But anyway, this pivot maneuver it's what all of these guys are using in order to do those quick position shifts. Watch as I play this riff right here. My thumb is gonna be behind about the sixth fret, okay? Now watch the way that my thumb and my entire arm don't move and change positions, but rather everything kind of swings off the thumb. Check this out. <laughs> Having that thumb in just one position like that provides your hand with some real stability. It keeps you from sliding up too far or sliding down too far, and it overall provides a lot less um, friction than trying to move the entire thing up and down like that. You'll notice how much squeakier that sounds too whenever you're moving your entire arm hand up and down the neck, whereas if you pivot, everything just sounds a lot smoother. So you'll notice that my thumb here for that particular riff, I'd say I'm a little bit above halfway down the neck, and um, I'm not applying too much pressure. You don't have to really like mash super hard with the thumb. The uh, rule of thumb, if you will, is that if you can see you know, the fingernail turning white like that, you're probably applying too much pressure. Keep it pretty loose. And again, this sort of pivoting technique that I'm talking about, you'll notice how I'm just swinging off of the thumb. Again, the riff mainly takes place between the fifth and seventh. I'm putting my thumb right in the middle of those, right around the sixth. That affords me plenty of room to slide down 
and slide up to the seven like you need to in that riff as well without ever having to move my hand. Way more in control, way easier to play whenever you're using this pivot technique. Let me play that again from a different angle so you can hopefully see it even better with the thumb kind of centered here in the middle of the position shifts. Now you'll notice whenever I get up there to like that eighth position, my hand is spread out really wide, you know? But again, I can still have all the pressure and all the stability I need, even with my hand in this kind of extended position. Typically for, you know, the best grip, you want the thumb to kind of be in the center of the chord grip or whatever it is that you're playing just to get that good vice-like kind of action. But it doesn't really have to be, especially if you're playing like electric guitar and stuff. Strings aren't that hard to push down. So it's okay if your vice is kind of misaligned to get into the upper position of a riff like that. Let's also take a look at that Bell Tolls riff by Metallica because it has some really fast position shifts from open up to three, two, and one to play all those power chords. Now again, if I'm trying to do a quick position shift off the thumb every time I make one of those movements, this is just not gonna happen. You're gonna have that really super sticky feel. It's gonna be hard to change positions and stuff. It would look like this. Hear how noisy it is too because of all the position shifting. It's like the hand is just constantly having to find a new starting point. If the position is shifting like crazy, you're always having to find like a new neutral every time you move that thing. Plus, you're probably gonna be like either over tightening with the thumb, which causes a lot of friction and fatigue, or you're gonna be having to like tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, which is bound to fail at some point. Now instead, whenever you approach a riff like that one, think about it this way. The riff is taking place between frets one and three, right? The opens don't really count. That's kind of a cheater. Um, I'm going to position my thumb behind about the second fret. I'm a little bit to my left of the second fret, okay? And that's going to provide me all the room I need to kind of swing off that thumb. Again, I'm just going to pivot, okay? Pivoting off the thumb. And that's going to make those position shifts so much easier. It looks like this. <laughs> Again, no moving positions. You're just locking yourself into the center of the entire position of the riff and pivoting from there. This might be a little bit unusual because again, you're gonna end up with some hyperextended positions in there either way. But I swear, this is the only way to get riffs like this sounding super smooth and really accurate, especially if you're playing live. If you're like moving around the stage and trying to jump positions like that, it's not gonna happen. Trust me, lock yourself into one spot pivot off the thumb, it works every time. Even in more like extreme cases, uh, there's a Meshuggah riff from Gods of Rapture, which is like a really early tune of theirs, that's kind of like that Beltol's riff, only infinitely worse. It's got way more position shifts in it. Sounds something like this from memory. <laughs> It's something like that, I'm blowing it. But again, you're getting the idea. It's got really quick shifts in there. That's kind of going from F sharp and F to E. So it's only taking place over two frets, but it's really fast. Imagine trying to play that jumping positions. It's not gonna happen. I can't do this too much on the internet. It starts to become too gifable if you follow my lead. But anyway, if I do that pivot position, it's not really that bad. Um, you'll notice too that I'm not really bearing down with like the tip of the thumb like this. I'm really just relying on the thumb print to kind of 
glide across like that right there. And you'll notice too that encourages us to keep a good low palm position. It doesn't allow me just to grip the neck like a ball bat and do that pivoting position. So this is also kind of encouraging better technique to get a good grip on the neck no matter what it is that you're playing. So as you play this, be sure to leave a little room for the unholy ghost here in between the palm and the edge of the neck as you do this pivot technique. And it's just gonna come along so much better for you no matter what it is that you're playing. There you go guys, that's it. That is the secret technique that I've literally never heard anybody talk about in a guitar lesson and I have no idea why because we all do it. It doesn't matter if you're playing rock or thrash or metal or blues or jazz or blaz, anything where you're gonna be slipping and sliding across the neck, use that pivot technique and you're gonna become a more better shredder in no time. Thanks so much to my lovely and loyal Patreon community for suggesting this as a topic for a video. I constantly get ideas for stuff to put up on my channel from my Patreon community, so be sure to sign up today and become a part of that, and maybe uh, the next video could be your idea. Patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Check it out today. Thanks as always so much for watching. Now, as for you guys, I recommend getting away from the computer and going to play some guitar. Let's click it. More picking. Paper!